Hello, my name's David, and in this video, we're going to have a look at my favorite way to remove objects from an image. We're also going to take a look at my favorite way to duplicate an object in an image. Plus, we're going to take this picture a stage further. Right, let's make a start. We're going to first of all remove this bollard. Now, we need to zoom in, so I'm going to press and hold down spacebar. Now I'm going to press and hold down command or control. That gives us a zoom tool. Let's zoom into this area here. Now we need to make a selection of this cone. So let's head over to the toolbox. In with the marquee tools, down the bottom you'll find the freehand selection tool. Up to the menu bar, there it is on freehand, which is the default. We're going to change this to polygonal, which is the straight line. Mode is set to new. Feather, make sure that is zero pixels. Coming down to the image, I'm going to click down, just coming on round the outside, giving a bit of a margin around like this. Coming to the base of the other cone, just coming over that, down to the bottom, across like this. Well, you can see where I am. Up to this side, and then coming up back to our blue spot. And if I click down here, that has now made our selection. Right, next to the layers panel, bottom right hand corner, you will find add pixel layer. Clicking on this puts in an empty pixel layer. It's got the word pixel as well. If I click on this, I'm going to call it what it's about to become, which is our clean up layer. Right, to remove this object, first of all, though, I'm going to zoom out. So I'm going to use Command 0, Control 0 to do that. Let's head back over to the toolbox. Of course, you could use the clone brush tool, you could use the inpaint brush. My favorite, oh, you've also got the healing brush. My favorite is the patch tool. With the patch tool, coming to the menu bar, we're on new. Make sure selection is sourced is unticked. That is important. Make sure this is unticked. And because we're using this new empty layer, current layer, you need to set this to current layer and below. And as soon as I click on this, watch what happens. It started to disappear. As I bring my cursor around, you can see it's now fully disappeared. So as part of the pavement. So what we need to do is come over to this area here. Looking at it, we've also got a vertical line running through. I've got a feeling this might work. So let's come down there. That vertical line there does look pretty good. Just bringing it down, lining up that pavement like this. That looks good. Once you're happy, click down. That then puts the bounding box around it. I'm going to press H on the keyboard to give me the hand tool. Let's zoom in again, spacebar, command or control. Let's come into this area here. That looks pretty good if I just switch this off and on. How quick and easy was that? But let's have a look around. There's some of the problems which might occur. You've got a little bit of a duplicate. This item here is here and you've got a bit of flare around this bollard. So we need to come back across to the toolbox, picking up the clone brush tool. With this I'm using, there it is, the size of the brush, 100% opacity and the flow hardness is 49%. One of the things we need to change because we're on this empty layer is current layer and below. So make sure you change that, otherwise it will not work. Right, let's come to this area here. I'm going to press and hold down Alt or Option. Notice how the brush changes to that across. This is where we're going to pick pixels up from. And we're simply going to go across like that. Now let's have a look at this flared item here. Come into our pavement. Let's pick it up from here. So pressing alter option. Notice how it changes. We've got that cross again. Clicking down. And if I just go over like that. And we can just sharpen that up. Like this. I'm back on that object again. Right, can't seem to avoid that. So let's just pick up from this point here and let's go quickly over that. There it is, job done. A little bit, bit of a black spot. Now, one of the big advantages of using a new empty layer, if I duplicated this layer, of course, you also duplicate the file size. Using this one, you're only using the information which is on this layer. The other big advantage is you can pick up the uh, eraser tool and you can see it's still there underneath. So you can erase bits and pieces. For example, I can come down that little black spot next to our shadow. I can just go over that. All right, I've just started to remove part of the bollard there as well. So I'm going to use Command Z, Control Z, and just taking it on the there. That looks okay like that. Right, he says, 
quickly moving on. Next, let's have a look at something a little bit more complex. How about this fence? Let's zoom out a little bit. I'm going to use spacebar. Now I'm going to use Alt or Option to zoom out into this area here. All right, let's go to fit on screen commands. Zero, control zero to do that. Right, picking up the lasso tool yet again, which there it is, polygonal. Yep, that's everything we need. Before we make our selection, let's zoom in a little bit, which is spacebar. Now, command or control, let's come into this sort of region here. That'll do nicely. Just dropping it down a little bit by pressing on the spacebar. Coming to the top of our railing, fencing, whatever it's called. There we'll do nicely. Coming to the outside, coming down to the bottom like this. Coming to the pavement area and just coming over the top of the pavement to here, just bringing it out, just roughly aligning it with the blue spot at the top. That will do nicely. Clicking down. There we are. Right over to the toolbox and we're going to go in with the patch tool. Just lifting it up. Yes, we've still got the selection is source. We've still got the uh, layer and below. We can see everything working. We need to have a vertical line. We need to have a horizontal line with this. So let's just move it around till we find those objects. There I can see the horizontal line as well. So I need to drop it down like this, moving it across into position, just lifting it up. There's our horizontal line, moving it across. There's our vertical line and just come in like that. Click down. If you don't click down firmly, if you lose the selection, don't worry about it. Simply use Command Z, Control Z, and then that will bring back the selection and then click down firmly. That is the one key thing is make sure you click down firmly. Pressing H on the keyboard will give me the hand tool. Command 0, Control 0 to go to fit on screen. There it is. That fence has completely disappeared. Right. Next. Let's make a selection of our model. Let's duplicate her, in fact. Spacebar, Command or Control. Let's zoom into this area here. Picking up the lasso tool, as we've done before. This time, I am going to use the freehand lasso. Let's come to this position here. Let's start off. I'm just going to do a very quick selection of our model. And coming around, I want to avoid those uh, holes in the wall. Mind you, I've got a feeling she thinks she's looking in a mirror. Um, yeah, I'm not going to burst a bubble at this stage. Round we come down. You can see, let's take the shadow as well. Taking caution to avoid that hole down the bottom. And round we go here to the top of the pavement. Coming over the top of the pavement. Avoiding that crack. The other thing to avoid is that light spot close to her foot. Round we go and up to the other side where we can meet up with that blue spot. And there is our selection. Right, let's just see if I can move across. No, need to zoom out a little bit. Spacebar. Now press Alt or Option. Zooming out to this area here will do nicely. Now to duplicate her, first of all, we need to click on this layer here and we need to put in a new empty layer. I'm going to lift that to the top of the layer stack. Yes, that would be better so we can see what's going to happen. Otherwise, it would be shielded behind this layer here. Picking up our patch tool, she has disappeared. But if we come to the menu bar, if we click on Selection is Source, there it is. She has now reappeared. And let's just bring her across into this area here. And let's just move her around a little bit just placing it on top of that pavement looks a little bit fuzzy don't worry too much about that and if i just click down there it is you can see that bounding box has gone around it i'm going to press h on the keyboard there it is let's remove that she's back again determined to make another appearance let's pick up the hand tool that would be better and i'm going to use command d Control d to deselect there she is Right, let's make her a little bit different from her twin. And we're going to do that by going to the toolbox. We're going to pick up the rectangular marquee tool. A very quick selection over her dress like this. Heading down to the bottom of the layers panel. We're going to go to the adjustment layers to HSL, hue, saturation and luminance. Let's lift this up. I've got a feeling this dress is predominantly blue. So let's click on our blue spot. Let's pick up our picker. 
let's come across let's make a selection from here yeah jumped around a little bit it's on this range coming down to the hue shift and if we move this across we can have whatever color we want i'm going to go for a green color you can of course have it as saturated as much as you want desaturated let's add a little bit of saturation to it don't want to outshine her twin sister there will do nicely and if we just click to accept that command d control d job done and if we just use command zero control zero we can go to fit on screen that's the story so far let's take it a stage further come to the top layer i'm going to right click and we're going to go to merge visible that's going to merge it into this new layer at the top we're now going to duplicate the top part of our image i've got the rectangular marquee tool so clicking on the top i'm going to come down i'm going to take it just below that level of the pavement where we got that uh, black line going across there will do nicely and i'm going to use command j control j to duplicate that area there it is it's now on its own layer believe me it is there i hope command d control d will deselect it's now appeared thank goodness for that clicking on this layer this is the one with the road part in it we're now going to pick up the crop tool i'm going to zoom out which is pressing the space bar now i'm going to press alt or option for the zoom in out tool zoom out to that sort of area here releasing it there's our crop tool i'm going to pull it down from the bottom until this center line here comes to the bottom of the pavement so let's drag it down like that double clicking to apply a crop clicking on the top layer i'm now going to use v on the keyboard which is the shortcut for the move tool coming to the top center grab handle let's pull this down there will do nicely pressing c on the keyboard again gives you the crop tool coming to the center grab handle let's lift it up let's take it to that sort of area here i'm going to crop it down like that right next we're on this layer let's go down to this icon here for our live filter and we're going to shoot up to ripple we're going to make it look like it's in water okay and we're going to drop the intensity down because it's just a little bit too intense at that so let's take it to this sort of area here to start off with if you get little white bits come in you see there's one tiny one there just click on preserve alpha that will fill that in on the edges let's click to accept it I'm going to just click on this layer again. I want to put a bit more ripple around this area. So I'm going to pick up the marquee tool, the rectangular marquee tool, just clicking down, going over this, not forgetting her shadow. And that there will do nicely. Once again, we're going to go down to our live filter. Let's come up to ripple. And you can see it's just inside that marquee tool. I'm just going to ripple it a little bit more you know, keep doing that she's doing a bit of a shimmy and um, something like that i was just looking at the just distorting a little bit too much on this part don't forget these are live filters you can always come back you can always change it command d control d will deselect i think to finish off with this image one final touch another live filter this time we're going to use a vignette yes you know me and my vignettes make sure you click on it make sure you put it on top of the layer stack so it's working on all the layers underneath with this particular one it's one of these images that can yeah you could perhaps make it a little bit brighter as a vignette or of course you could make it a, just a touch darker something like that looks pretty good live filters you can always come back you can always change you can adjust it you can change you can adjust the color of this don't forget you will have to just erase it a hole through the layer to bring the color through you can change these as well so everything is going to be completely adjustable pressing shift on the keyboard highlighted all the layers and ticking them you can see that's what we started off with and there it is removing the items from the image duplicating our, our model go on give it a try i hope you've enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up if you have don't forget to subscribe plenty more videos to come and if you click that little bell icon you'll receive a notification every time a new video is posted but until the next time it is happy imaging and take care